Okay. Um, first, any questions over homework? Yes. Are you talking about y squared minus 14y plus 49, that one? So I'm multiplying. Oh. Oh, I assigned 33? Oh, my goodness. I didn't see that division sitting off on the side. Okay, so don't worry about that, okay? Yeah, did you not write that division either? You didn't. You left it off? Okay, let's get to that, okay, because I haven't talked about division. I, for some reason, I didn't, when I looked at the problem, I didn't see the division sitting there. Okay, good. And when we work today, we'll, we'll kind of lead into that. Any other questions? Yes. That's right. No. Because exactly. Yeah. So you're not doing anything to both the top and the bottom. Right. All you're doing is factoring negative out of the top. Now you can also factor negative out of the bottom. Either way, but the key is that. The numerator and denominator, the piece you're looking at, they have to differ by sign. Correct. Every term has to be Correct. opposite in sign. Mm -hmm. It's going to stay, but if you have something else there, you could distribute that negative one back through that other thing that's there. Okay, so that yeah. Stay, that yep. Stay. Yep. It'll stay. Is there another? Cordelia, you didn't have something? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to continue. So it's going to be factoring, more factoring, but we're going to we're going to now talk about multi. Uh, we were talking about multiplication of rational expressions. Now we're going to look at division. So just as a reminder, um, this is the rule that we had for multi multiplying fractions. If you had two fractions, right? We love multiplying fractions because you just multiply straight across, right? So this becomes A times C over B times D. And then later on when you're learning fractions, they say, oh, there's this thing called division. And so if you have something like this, A over B divided by C over D, that this first turns from division to multiplication. So division is just a, a multiplication, but it's multiplication what we call the reciprocal. So you leave the A over B the same, you change it from division to multiplication, you flip or reciprocate. Reciprocal means to flip it, basically. So you do the reciprocal of the C over D. So the big thing here is the change here. Flip this one. You don't flip the first one, you flip the second one. All right? And then it's just multiplication again. So you go straight across, and now it's A times D over B times C. So really today with the division, there's, there's nothing different except for the flipping, all right? But let me show you how we have to be a little bit careful, all right? Let's, let's do something with numbers. Let's say I have 4 over 9 divided by 3 over 2. Yes. That's, yeah, that's what I'm going to address right now, okay? So you may see this right now. You may see that, hey, 2 goes into 2 one time, and 2 goes into 4 twice, and 3 goes into 3 one time, and 3 goes into 9 three times. Do you see that? But you cannot do that, okay? You can't do any of that, like you referred to, like a cross-canceling, until after you've flipped the second fraction. Then you're free to do it. So that would be incorrect. So that's why I wanted to give you this example to point that out. So first, let's convert this by leaving four-ninths the same and now flipping the second one over to two over three. And now notice nothing cross-cancels. 
right? So you just go straight across. You get 8 over 27. And those are what we call relatively prime, which means there's no common factor. We can't cancel, can't reduce, and it's done. Had you done that canceling out first, right? Had you actually done this, you get a totally different answer. You would get what? Well, it'd be two thirds, and then times one. So it would just so it'd just be two thirds, and that's not correct. So just be careful with that. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at our first problem today. We're going to take 20 minus 8x minus x squared divided by 6x squared plus 5x minus 4 divided by x squared plus 8x minus 20 over 3x squared plus 13x plus 12. So before I do anything, I'm going to flip it. So I'm going to flip the second rational expression, so the one on the right side, flip it over. And I'm just going to rewrite everything, even though I don't like to have to rewrite everything. I'm going to do it. So nothing changes on the left. On the right, bring that denominator up to the top. Take the numerator down to the bottom. OK. Now, once we're here, we can start doing what we did last class, which is to look at, to look at these pieces as four different factoring problems, OK? Four different factoring problems. Now, the, the yellow one is the only one that I see up there that looks unnatural. Like, we never really dealt with something like that with three terms where the order was backwards like that. The others are in order, right? They're in what we call descending order. So we would just do our AC method on those. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to show the work for the yellow one, and then all the others I'm going to do and just say, hey, you could do that on the side on your own. But let's just do the yellow one. Okay, over here, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange it. Negative x squared minus 8x plus 20. And I'm going to work with it just like that, okay? I'm going to do my AC method. What is, or what are the numbers that go into this thing here? Negative 8 I agree with. Negative 20. Do you see where the negative 20 comes from? Yes, because we have a, really it's like a negative 1 out in front of that x squared right there, right? Negative 1 times positive 20 is here, and then here we got our negative 8. So let's come up with our two numbers. What is it? Negative what? Negative 10, positive 2. Good. Now let's be real careful. We're going to do that grouping technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the first term in the last term, right? The first term is still negative x squared. The last term is still a positive 20. And then in the middle, I go negative 10x. I go positive 2x. And then I split it, and I do my grouping, right? What can I factor out of the first two terms? Negative x, right? I could also do x. I could do negative x, or I could do x. It's up to you. I'm going to pull the negative x because that's what I was told. So I'm going to pull that out, negative x. What am I left with? x plus 10. OK, we need that to match over here. Is there something that I could put out in front of that x plus 10 that would give me back 2x plus 20? Positive 2, right? OK, so this turns into the x plus 10. And then what goes over here? Good, negative x plus two. All right. That's it. Got it? Okay. Now I'm going to come back over here to the problem because remember that was all scratch work over there, right? Sometimes I put SW for scratch work on that side. Come back over here. That top left turns into x plus 10 
times negative x plus 2. The bottom turns into, let's see, we'd have to factor that, right? Whew, that might be a little bit of work there. So negative 24, right? Anybody do that one yet? 2x minus 1 and 3x plus 4? Okay, I'll check it real quick. 6x squared, 8. Take away 3 is 5, and then 4. Good. Okay, so the bottom left, that okay? You would have to, again, do all this, right? You understand that. Okay, and then on the other fraction, I have top right... Anyone have that one yet? No? So it's 36 and 13. So what's that? Nine and four. Nine and four, right? I took a second to come out there. Nine and four. So nine. Four, I put a 3 under here, a 3 out front here. It comes out to be 3x plus 4, x plus 3. Okay, but what I did here, I had shown you all like a super shortcut way that I that I had come up with. I don't remember that. And, it, and then people wound up really liking the grouping way. I, I only like the shortcut way because it's really fast. So I'm not asking you to even care about this right now just that you could do all that and get down to those two. That's 3x squared, let's see, 9, 13, 12. Yeah, so that does work. Is that all right? I'm kind of like waving my hands at this and not really showing the work on that factoring. Okay, then the one on the bottom, this one should be easier. 20, negative 8, how do we get that? 2 and 10? Positive 2, negative 10? Oh, no. Negative 2, positive 10. Thank you. Okay, so there is the complete factoring of everything. Now, we have a multiplication symbol right here in the middle, right? But because fraction multiplication means you go straight across, right? I really don't even need that dot. I could just make that division bar go all the way across. So that's what I'm going to choose to do here. I'm going to really take that out and I'm going to do all the way across like this. And now I can start canceling things if they match, right? So anything match? What do we have? x plus 10, x plus 10. What else? 3x plus 4, 3x plus 4. Does anything else match exactly? No. Does anything else match almost, but just off by a sign? Yeah, this one right here and this one right here. Those two are off by a sign. So what I'm going to do is, are you okay with that? Okay, so I'm going to factor a negative out either of the top or the bottom. I'm just going to go off the top. I'm going to pull that negative one out. It's going to change the sign to a positive x and a negative 2. What else is still up here on the top? x plus 3, right? And then on the bottom, I'm not changing anything, right? It's still the 2x minus 1 that I had down there and then the x minus 2. And now these two match, don't they? And so I can cancel them. But the negative one I pulled out is going to stay. So you have a couple of options as to how to write this answer. Yes? If what now? Yeah, let me show you several variations of a correct answer, okay? Because there are different ways you could write the answer and still be right. Okay, one way you could write the answer is like this. You could put the negative 1 out there in parentheses, x plus 3, and on the bottom, you could put 2x minus 1. That's the only thing left, right? You could box that. That would be correct, all right? You could also distribute the negative 1 through, which give, gives you negative x minus 3 over 2x minus 1. You could do that. Box that. That's correct. 
But remember with negatives on fractions, and I'll, I'll write it down on the side here. Remember, with fractions and negative signs, if I write negative 3 over 5, that's the same as 3 over negative 5, isn't it? Or that's the same as negative 3 over 5. So with negative signs on fractions, the negative can be on top, the negative can be on the bottom, or the negative can just be out front, right? So I could have taken that negative sign that was here, and if I wanted to, I could have moved it to the bottom. If I would have moved it to the bottom, the x plus 3 would have stayed on top, and now the negative is on the bottom, right? So it distributes through the bottom and becomes a what? Negative 2x plus 1. So that negative, I could have brought it down to the bottom instead and then distributed it through. That would be a correct answer. Or you could have just put the negative sign out in front of everything and put the x plus 3 on top, don't change anything. 2x minus 1 on the bottom, don't change anything. It's kind of exaggerated. There we go. Negative out front. All of those answers are correct. Oh, it's okay. I'm going to be getting a call, too. One of the things, I know not everyone is going on to do a lot more math, but I know some people are. One of the things um, that you want to get good at is recognizing that two answers that look different are actually the same. Um, I'll never forget when I was a tutor, when I, when I was in grad school, like I said, we had to teach classes, but I also had to do what's called a, a dissertation, or not dissertation, um, I'm getting confused now. Um, there was a calculus class that was taught by a professor, and, and then what happened is all those students in the calculus class, on every Friday for three hours, they went into a room, this big auditorium, and they could ask questions on calculus. And guess who was standing in the front answering questions? me okay so i'd go in there and there would be like three classes of calculus students from different professors and i would have to answer any calculus question that they that they wanted on you know out of the book so i remember giving a problem and working through it and getting the answer and then moving on and then later on one of the students came into our, our tutoring lab where i also worked and he was all mad and he interrupted me and I was helping a student, he, he interrupted me, and he's like, you need to apologize to the class for giving us the wrong answer, la, 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 all this stuff. And he, he showed me what the correct answer was in the back of the book, and then he showed me what I put on the board, and I looked at them, and they were very complicated expressions. But I could tell immediately it was just algebra to get from one to the other. It was just like this, you know, to move, if you move this sign here and move that, then that answer will look like my answer. So he didn't make that connection. And so I sat there and proceeded to tell him to sit down and watch me do the algebra. And I did the algebra and showed him and everything. But I'll never forget that that was a lesson for, for me and for everyone that was in that lab that day, that to be, to be good at math, you have, to, you have to see these little subtleties and be able to be comfortable with them. You, know? you don't want to get to an answer in the back. Like, you don't want to do a problem like this and then get to the back of the book and see this answer and be like, Shh, I'm wrong. You know, you want to see that this is this, right? Or, or, okay, this answer that the book has is this. What if I did this? Would this be correct? What, if I wrote this answer right here, 3 plus x over 1 minus 2x. If that's what the back of the book has, did I get the right answer? Yes. Okay, that's this one, right? Just flip that one around and flip these two around. So we want to just be comfortable with those signs. And I know it takes time, and not, maybe it's not going to happen here, but for those going on to do more math, you definitely want to start. This is, like I was telling you last class, this is the algebra that makes, you know, that's important. Yes? Okay. So what, what I think you're suggesting is could we just have pulled a negative 1 out here and made it an x squared plus 8x minus 20? Well, let me ask you, do you think that would be okay? Yes. Because you're not doing any, you're not violating anything as far as algebra rules are, are established, right? You're not breaking a rule. You're factoring a negative 1 out early. As long as you keep track of that negative 1 and don't lose it, then you could take that blue part in parentheses, come over here, do it, 
if you did that, you would, it would change some of the signs. This would factor differently. Mm -hmm. If you did this, this part right here would have turned into x whew, plus 10. I'm about to sneeze. X minus 2. That's what it would have turned into with your negative 1 out front. Okay, your negative 1 would have been here. This, you would have done your little AC thing, and it would have turned into these two. And if you did that, that would have canceled here. See, this one would have been different now, right? It would have been an X minus 2, and that would have canceled immediately. Uh huh. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, 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 yes. I didn't even see that, but yes. Okay, what, what's being pointed out here is that do you all see that if I had pulled a negative one out first, right here, that this right here, oops, this right here matches this one exactly? And when we flipped it over right here, that blue one would have been right up here, and we could have canceled the whole thing. Yes. Yes. And I think that's part of what makes algebra kind of weird, but it also is what makes it so, I don't want to use the word beautiful in here because people might throw up, but... <laughs> That's, that is part of what makes it great, is because as long as you don't break rules, there's multiple paths leading to the same answer. Everyone's starting at point A and trying to get to point B. It's just a question of which path are you going to take, right? And you just saw a path that would have gotten us there. We wouldn't have even had to have factored those two. They would have just canceled. So that would have been an even shorter path to the end goal there. Yes. <laughs> so what you what you don't want is see what happens is if you're trying to get from A to B and you break a rule right you, you or you don't factor correctly all of a sudden you are no longer on a path that leads there the only way to usually get back to that is actually break a rule again and just by chance <laughs> fall back onto a path to B you know so all right I'll leave the lips there shade them shade them in red. Okay. All right, let's move on. All right, let's try a problem that has both division and multiplication, like the one that I accidentally assigned for homework. All right. Ooh, gosh, seriously? All right, xy plus 7x minus 2y minus 14 over x squared minus 16x plus 63 divided by, my goodness, 2xy plus 14x minus 5y minus 35 all over 2x squared minus 19x plus 35 times x squared minus 18x plus 80, oh, 81, not 18, 81. Now, we need to be very careful with this one, all right? And I'll show you why below. I don't know if I ever showed you this example or not. Did I ever show you that example? Did I? No? What is 12 divided by 3 times 4? 16, 4, One. Right? What's 16? 
Okay, what, let's talk about what possible answers it could be, all right? I could do 12 divided by 3 first. 12 divided by 3 is what? 4, 4 times 4 is 16. So 16 seemed like a plausible answer. Okay, I could also have done the 3 times 4 first, which would have given me 12, right? And then I would have had 12 divided by 12, and that would have been 1. I don't really see any other plausible answers. Does anyone else see anything really possible? I mean, unless you do something that I'm not seeing. Could you do the 12 times the 4 first, then divide by 3? You know what I'm saying? Like this one, and then divide by 3? Mm. I guess you could, but that... Yeah. So, do you see that there's two different answers here? So we have to have some system uh, in place that we all agree what to do first, right? Do we do the division first? Do we do the multiplication first? Well, I heard someone say it. We have this thing called PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is the way I learned it. Y'all seen that before? Okay, the way that it's taught is, well, depends. We're about to find out how it was taught. Let's see how you remember it. According to this, you're supposed to do what first? Anything in parentheses first, right? Then, after you've done that, exponents, right? Then, okay, you learned it the right way. Multiplication and division are not in that order. Multiplication, then division. It is not that way. It is multiplication or division, whatever appears first as you move from left to right as you read a book. Okay? So this is always from left to right. And addition and subtraction is exactly the same. It's always as you move from left to right. All right? Most people are taught PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and they are taught multiplication before division. That's the way I was taught. It was wrong, and that's just, that just reinforces why our math education system needs total rehaul, because people teaching it a lot of times aren't comfortable with the way things are supposed to be. So it's just, you know, it's propagate is a word. It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Okay, so if you have a calculator that allows you to type in, like, if you could type in 12 divided by 3 times 4 on the calculator all at one time, it'll spit out 16. And that's because your calculator knows these rules. These rules, look, we had to agree on rules, right? If we don't agree on rules, then one person's going to get 16, another person's going to get 1, and then when you go out to build a bridge or try and send a satellite into orbit, you get one engineer who did division before multiplication, the other one did multiplication before division, then everything falls apart, right? We all have to agree. That's what we agreed upon. We meaning someone way before us, right? Okay, so when I go back up to this, I should do this division first, because it appears first as I move from left to right. So I do that, that's 4, 4 times 4 is 16. So 16 is the correct answer to this, all right? So going back up here, same thing. I have division, I have multiplication. I do not do this multiplication first. I do the division first. Why is that so important? Well, what am I going to do if I divide these? I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to factor them out, but what do I have to do to change this division symbol? I have to flip this one, right? When I flip this one, I can no longer, you see, if I had done this first, I would be working with it just like this, right? But this one needs to be flipped. And so working with these first would have messed everything up. I have to flip it first. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to flip the second one over. I'm going to go ahead and go to a new page. What do you think will happen? If they were both multiplication? then you would do multiplication first, then division. Yes, from left to right. So multiplication and division are equal. One does not get preference over the other. It's always just the way you read it from left to right. Now, if one of them was multiplication, the other one was addition, you do the multiplication before you do the addition. Or if it was multiplication and subtraction, you do the multiplication first. Division and addition, division first. Division and subtraction, division first. Okay? 
So let me flip this second one around, and because I'm doing electronic ink, it'll be easier for me to do, right? So 2x squared minus 19x plus 35, and then, where was this nasty thing? 2xy plus 14x minus 5y minus 35. I don't know if I expressed to you all earlier, I'm sure I have throughout the semester, that, um, you know, over my teaching career, things have really kind of changed. Uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 people in here. This is when I first started here, when Northwest Vista was pretty new. This is about how many people we had in our classes normally to start, 12 to 15 usually. We maxed out usually at 18. And I don't know, it was just a, it was just more of an intimate setting where, I mean, you know what I mean? It's just like when you start a class off and you have 26 people in there and we're all crammed in here, everyone is kind of, you know, like just, and imagine going to university. My pre-calculus class at a university is 280 people in an auditorium. So talk about feeling like just a piece of sand on a beach. All right, let's get back to business. I'm just yapping today. Must be ready for the holiday, for the weekend, huh? All right, let's uh, let's try and um, let's work through the first. Well, since it's multiplication with both of them, right? I'm just going to go straight across with everything. And what about that last multiplication? Isn't that a fraction? Isn't this whole thing that over one? Okay, so why don't, we, why don't we try and focus our attention on trying to factor all one, two, three, four, five expressions here to factor. How about that top left one? GCF? No. How many terms? Four, because there's four. Grouping, right after that 7x, I split it. Let me try and do that here. What do I factor out of the first one? X, what's left? y plus 7. I need a y plus 7 over here also. So what can I factor out there, to, or what comes out here? Negative 2, right? So that'll turn into a y plus 7, and then x minus 2. That's my top left. Okay. Bottom left. AC method, right? Numbers that multiply to 63. 9 and 7, negative 9 and negative 7 add up to be negative 16. So this should turn into x minus 9, x minus 7. Again, that might take a little bit of time, but that's what it'll be. How about the middle top? Another AC method, right? I have 70, 70 and... Negative 19. Oof. What are the factors of 70? 35 and 2? Is 3 going there? No. 4? What is it? What is it? 5 and 14, they'll both be negative, right? Negative. Wait, what did you say? 5 and 14. So it should turn out to be x minus 7, 2x minus 5. Are, are you all okay that I'm not showing these? I mean, I think you can appreciate the work that's involved with it, right? But math's like a pyramid, right? It all builds upon itself. So if every time we have to go back to the very beginning, you'll never get anything accomplished. So some of it we have to just leave to, to the reader, to you, to figure out. Okay, this right here, bottom, middle. Four terms, right? No GCF. So I'm going to do grouping on that. I'll try and do that all on, on here. I'll try and squeeze it in. I'll make it easier for myself there. What can I factor out of the first two? 2x. I'm left with y. 
7. And then I need the same thing over here, y plus 7. So I factor out negative 5. So that bottom turns into y plus 7, 2x minus 5. I have one more thing to factor, and that's the top right. And that's going to be AC method again. It should turn out to be x minus 9 times x minus 9 again. The one, you don't even need it, because you could just say all of this times one. But, you know, there's a, always a one next to everything, right, being multiplied. So let's start canceling. It should be a cancel fest here. X minus 9, X minus 9, 2X minus 5, 2X minus 5, X, plus, X minus 7, X minus 7, X plus 7, X plus 7. That's it? Man, I wiped the whole denominator out, didn't I? The only thing left is the top, x minus 2 and x minus 9, which you could leave like that, right? Or if you wanted to, you could multiply those all together like a foil and get x squared minus 11x plus 18. Either one would be okay. I think the book... The book, the book multiplied it out. Yes. On the 63 one, on the bottom left one, I forgot my coffee. Two days in a row, I haven't had coffee. Yes, but I'm just letting you know the the book did it this way. On the they expanded it out. So again, if you're checking your answer in the back of the book and you got this, and then you see that, you're like, ah, oh, well, just multiply them together. Most of these problems, things are gonna cancel out. So you you know, if you do this whole problem and you realize none of this cancels, there's probably something wrong. If only one thing cancels, I mean, maybe it is just one thing. I mean, it, I can't predict the way the book is going to want make this happen, but that's right. It has to be top and bottom. You cannot cancel two things along the top. Yeah. Uh, not over. There's an X minus 9. That's still on the top. Okay, I had assigned up through 33, correct? So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to just add to that assignment. This was page 468, or yeah, 468. What I had done is I had avoided the division problems. So here are the division problems for that section. 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, I know, <laughs> which you get an extra holiday. Tomorrow's a holiday, a school holiday. I okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, just look on the video. It'll be. Yeah. I'm not collecting it or anything. No. Yeah. You're okay. 
Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's it for the division. Um, unfortunately, we still need a little bit more today. All right. Yeah, we're going to keep going is what all I'm saying. 7.3, addition and subtraction. of rational expressions. Oh, did you get that or no? Okay. Yes, I did. Page 468. 468, problem 15. Hey, it's 15 through 23 odd, isn't it? Yeah. 15 through 23 odd. Okay, addition and subtraction. Now, we, we did multiplication division first because we had said that multiplication division are easier when it comes to fractions, right, than addition and subtraction is. Remember that if I wanted to add some fractions together, like if I want to do 2 thirds plus 7 thirds, could I add those two together? Why? Because they have a common denominator, right? They have the same denominator. So I can add them. And that becomes 10 thirds, doesn't it? Or no, it does not become. It becomes 9 thirds, and 9 thirds is the same as 3. Right? <laughs> All right. Now, I mean, think, think about it. I don't know if you ever really have thought about fractions this way. But if you say one-fourth of something plus let's say um, one-fourth, that should be equal to what? Two-fourths, which is one-half. Visually, what we said is like if you have a candy bar or something and you take one-fourth of it, that's one-fourth, right? And then you take another candy bar and you take one-fourth of it, that's one-fourth. If you add the two together, then you're going to have two of those little black things, right? Two of those little black things is the same as having two of them. And two of them out of four is going to be half of it. So a quarter of a candy bar and a quarter of a candy bar added together gives you half of a candy bar. That's why we do not add straight across, right? What would happen if I did the mistake or made the mistake of adding straight across? I would get what? Two over eight? Right, add straight across, and two over eight is the same as one over four. So that's saying you have one fourth plus one fourth, and you get one fourth. Doesn't make any sense, does it? So we cannot add fractions straight across. What we can do though is if we if they have the same denominators, we can just add across the numerators, right? One plus one gave us the two. And subtraction works the same way, right? If we have subtraction between the two, then we just subtract across the top, and we keep the denominator the same. So when it comes to rational expressions, if we want to try and add them, we're going to need to make sure they have the same denominator. That can be a problem. So let's start with this example. What if I have y over y plus 4 plus 4 over y plus 4? You have two fractions, don't you? Do they... Do they have the same denominators? Yes. So you can just add them, add the numerators and keep your denominator the same, right? So I'm going to keep my denominator the same. Let's add the numerators. Y, Y plus 4. What's Y plus 4? Y plus 4. What's Y plus 4 over Y plus 4? 1. Right? We're looking at this as like, okay, I have a factor on top, I have a factor on the bottom. They're exactly the same, so they cancel, but when you cancel, you're really saying that they reduce to become a 1, right? So the answer to this is 1. That's our first example. I made it work out so that it would be kind of okay. Yeah. Okay, next example. What if we have 3x squared over 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. 
and we take away from that 3x squared plus 4x plus 1 over 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 again. So do they have the same denominator? Yes. Okay, what's the operation here between them? We have subtraction, right? So we, we have to have that de common denominator if we're going to subtract. And since we have the same denominator, all we have to do is write the denominator down, 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. And then we need to do whatever operation is on top. Now, here's where people get in trouble, all right? You have to be extremely careful with this. We're going to go and say 3x squared, right? 3x squared, but then we are going to subtract everything we see here. That means we have to subtract the 3x squared, we have to subtract the positive 4x, and we have to subtract the negative. Subtraction makes all of these change signs. It's almost like a negative 1, right? Like, let's say this whole top here would have been, a, let's say, a 10. You would have said minus 10, right? Well, since this whole thing is this, we're technically doing this. We're subtracting that entire thing. Now, you don't need to write this step down necessarily, but you need to remember that subtraction is going to change all those signs. Do you see how that, that negative will distribute through? Okay, so this, that, that's the biggest mistake that I see, okay, students make, is on subtraction, they forget that that negative passes through everything. And they just put the negative on the first one and then leave the rest the same. So this becomes 3x squared, what, minus 3x squared, minus 4x, minus 1 over 2x squared, minus 5x, plus 2. What happens up on the top there? Do you all see that? Yeah, you, you, can, you can cancel these out. 3x squared, take away 3x squared, they're gone. So all I have on the top is negative 4x minus 1. And on the bottom, 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. Now, I'm going to do something to this. I'm going to see, since the bottom is a, is a trinomial, three terms, I'm going to try and factor it AC method real quick and see what happens. If I do the bottom AC method, I have a 4 and I have a negative 5. Negative 4, negative 1, give me that. Right? So if I redo this and go through and do the work, I'm not going to show it, but I should get 2x, I think I get x here, let me see, minus 2, and then over here, x minus 1. I believe that's it. See, 2x squared minus 4x minus, yeah, that's it right there, right? I, the only reason I did that was to just make sure that I couldn't cancel one of these on the top, right? Like if this, like if this up here on top had, a, had been a 2x minus 1, I could have canceled it out, but it doesn't. So that's, it? that's it. You, you should always be trying to factor everything out, yeah to see if anything cancels. So your answer could be this in blue or this one in blue. Either one would be acceptable. Okay, I'm going to show you one more example and then I think we're going to cut out of here so that you can have your fiesta. All right. No, it's all right. Hold on. Ha ha ha! That was funny. That was so funny. Okay. <laughs> all right. Last last one for the day. Um, okay. So let me remind you, if you have something like four fifths plus three fourths you cannot add those together, 
right? Because they don't have, well, I mean, you can, but you can't just go and do what we just did. You have to have the same denominator. So then we go through this process of finding what was, what was called the LCD, least common denominator. So we go, we take a look at the LCD, and we look at both denominators, right? They're 5 and 4. And then what we did before is we listed out all the multiples of 5, all the multiples of 4. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, right? Blah, blah, blah. And then we list out the multiples of 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, tw whoa, 20, right? 24, da, 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 da. And we look for the least common number in those two lists. So it would have been 20. Now, you don't have to do all this if you just recognize that it's 20. But that's the process, right? So what we need to do is turn both the 5 and the 4 into 20s. And we're working with an expression here, not an equation. So we can't multiply both sides by 20 or do anything crazy like that. We have to do, we have to look at each one individually and ask ourselves, how can I convert 4 over 5 into something over 20? So I'm going to, to take the 5 and turn it into a 20, I have to multiply it by what? 4. So whatever I do on the bottom of it, I have to do on the top. So what I'm going to do is next to the 4 over 5, I'm going to multiply a 4 over 4 next to that 4 over 5, right? Now, I can use 4 over 4 because 4 divided by 4 is what? No, no, 4 over 4 is a 1, right? So this is really just a 1. 1 times anything is itself. So I'm not changing the integrity of what 4 fifths is. I'm just writing it as a different type of fraction. It's actually 16 over 20, isn't it? Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. Except to turn the other one into something over 20, I need to multiply it by 5. So I'm going to multiply 5 over 5 times that 3 over 4. And notice I'm doing it on the right side of it. It, it doesn't matter. You could do it on the left, like you could have put it here. But I do it on the right because I, my plus is there. I don't want to get things crammed up together. And that will turn into what? 15 over 20. Now you have the same denominator. So you add across. 31 over 20. And we're done. Yes. Um, called those mixed numbers, right? It's not wrong, but it's not used much anymore. Like we don't, we're going to wean ourselves off that. So it wouldn't be wrong. I wouldn't count it wrong, but that would be, that'd be, a, yeah, just extra work. Okay, that's how you add fractions that are just numbers. So how are we going to do something like this? What if we have 4 over x plus 3 over x plus 4. So we have two rational expressions being added together. I look at the denominators. They aren't the same, right? They aren't the same. Th this can be a little bit difficult for people because I think they, for, for the right reasons, it, most people look at this and say, oh, look, if this was just a plus 4, I'd be okay, right? The problem is when you have x, 4 over x, I'm allowed to multiply by 1, right, and not change the problem. But I cannot just add 4 and add 4. That I cannot do. Okay? I cannot do that. Why can't I do that? Hmm. Take a problem that, that we know the answer to. One half, right? One half is one half, right? Half a candy bar. Can you just add four to both the top and bottom and have the same thing? What's that? That's five over six. Is five six half? No. There's something wrong with doing it that way. We won't get too technical here, but I'll just say you cannot just add the same thing to the top and bottom of a fraction. You can multiply the top and bottom fraction by something, but you can't add. So there's no way we're going to be able to turn this into an x plus 4 by just adding 4 on top and bottom. That's a huge algebraic mistake, all right? That takes you off that path, like I said. Okay, so this is a no-go. So what I need to do is I need to look at the x and the x plus 4 
as just two distinct denominators, just like the just like the four and the five from the previous problem were two different numbers. These are two different expressions, and there's no way that I can make them look exactly the same. So I'm going to talk about an LCD now. My LCD in the previous problem, I had to look at both the 4 and the 5, right? Here, I'm going to have to look at both the x and the x plus 4. And then I ask myself, what's a least common multiple? Hmm. Back here. Let's take a look at something back here. Does anybody notice that this 20 was also just the 4 and the 5 multiplied together? Okay. It turns out that for any two fractions, if you're trying to add them, and you're trying to find a common denominator, if you just multiply the two together, you get a common denominator. It may not be the least common denominator, but it is a common denominator, and that's all we need. So our, our attack, our tactic, our approach to this problem, to these problems, is that when we have two different denominators, we put them into the LCD. All we do to create the LCD is take them and multiply them together. And we don't even, we actually don't even multiply them out. We just set them next to each other, like that. X times X plus 4. No, just leave it like this. Yep. Now, here's why. What did we do earlier with the previous problem? We had, we had this 5 down here, right? And we wanted to turn it into 20, didn't we? So we said, oh, just multiply by 4. We had the 4 here. We said we want to turn it into 20, so we said, oh, just multiply it by 5. Well, and then do that on the top and bottom, right? So when we look at this problem, we say, ah, oh, what do we have down here? Whoa, what the hell happened? Whoa, okay. So when we look down here, we say, look, I have an x down here. What do we need? x times x plus 4. What am I missing? I need the x plus 4 here. See, I have an x. I need the x plus 4 here. So what am I going to multiply on the top and bottom? x plus 4. So I'm going to come in here right now, and I'm going to put an x plus 4 in parentheses over an x plus 4, and I'm going to multiply that times that fraction that was on the left, the 4 over x. Then I'm going to have plus, then I have my other fraction, 3 over x plus 4, um, that's not an x. And what should I multiply that by on top and bottom? so that my x plus 4 turns into this LCD here. So what am I missing? The x. So I'm going to multiply an x on top and bottom here. Do you all see that? Questions? No? Sure? Everyone agree that this is a 1? Okay, so I'm not changing. Everyone agree this is a 1? Do you agree that when I multiply these two together, I get that? Do you agree that when I multiply these two together, this x plus 4 is actually in parentheses, so this is actually the same thing here. So they both have the same denominators this way? What I need to do now, though, is I need to actually multiply these together and these together. So that's what I'm going to do next. So this turns into, let's multiply this top left right here together. Distribute that 4 through the parentheses, and what do you get? 4x plus 16. Okay, on the bottom, on the bottom, I could multiply the x times the x plus 4, couldn't I? But I, again, I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to rearrange it. I'm going to put the x in front. So I have not changed the bottom, have I? And I recommend you don't do that either. Don't change them. Just keep them for now. And then plus, what do I get when I multiply the top two on the right here? 3x over what? x times x plus 4. And I need that x plus 4 in parentheses, right? So if, if you look at this now, don't these have the same denominator? Yes. And since they have the same denominator, I'm going to rewrite this equals this, the common denominator. And then what do I do to the tops? Add them up. So what do you get when you add these up? You get 4x plus, 6, plus 16 plus 3x, which is 
seven X plus 16 over X times X plus four. Now the reason, the reason I left this alone, okay, is because what if this up here factored? Like what if this up here turned out, I mean, it's not in this problem, but what if that up there turned out to be seven X squared plus X? Let's just say that that's what had turned out up here. Then couldn't I factor an X out of this and cancel it? It may turn out that what comes here needs to be worked on. So that's why I always leave the denominator factored until the very end. We're gonna get more practice with that next time. Now that I know that I cannot factor the top, I will distribute through the bottom and get that. Okay, homework for this page starts on page 475, 13 through 19 odd, and I will give you a hint on these, not a hint, it's, it's not really hidden, um, on all, all of the problems here, they already have a common denominator, so you do not have to do what I just did here. I just wanted to expose you to this first, and then next week we'll come back and we will focus a lot on this. But I will say when you do this, be careful, because when you put things together, it may still simplify and things may cancel out. So, Okay, everyone have a great weekend. Well, I almost went to the end anyway, sorry. Have a great weekend. And.